Sewing a Bonnet by Share Our World. Hi, this is Trace from Share Our World, and we are going to sew the bonnet we cut out and drafted yesterday. The, as you can see, it's magically changed fabric, which is due to the fact that my original tutorial did not save correctly on my OneDrive, so I'm redoing it. And just to remind you what we need, we need the two bonnet pieces, one of which has been ironed. We need two pieces for our straps, and we need the main body piece that has been ironed at the bottom, and we need a five to six inch piece of elastic, and we need a safety pin to for that elastic. I'm just going to put that safety pin on that elastic so I don't lose it. We also, you also need a sewing machine and snips and shears and the other varieties of things that you need as you sew. The first thing we are going to do is we are going to sew the casing for our elastic and we are going to sew it on this. That is why we double turned this. What we're going to do is we're going to sew along the edge of this top and then we are going to sew again about three eighths of an inch down if you want to draw that you can but I also need to make a small snip and I am going to snip this roughly um, roughly five eighths of an inch in probably not much more than five eighths of an inch in just about there to just about there I'm going to make a slit right there because I need to double roll this to finish this edge and I'm going to just do that on both sides. That just gives me a little bit of leeway to fold it. I can't fold that in unless I have a little snip there. And it doesn't need to be a big snip. It's just going to get doubled. It will get doubled like this. One roll. And then the second roll, just like that. And as you can see, I needed that snip right there. So, we are going to sew this from all the way from this edge, all the way across. And I didn't pin it or anything because I ironed it really well. If you're nervous that it'll move, you can pin it. I don't ever find it. I have not found that it has been necessary. Then I am going to sew a second line out of about three-eighths of an inch down from that first line to fit my elastic. This just needs to fit the elastic. It doesn't have to be perfectly, um, it doesn't have to be perfectly three-eighths of an inch. It just needs to be big enough to fit our elastic. Now I'm going to thread our elastic through there. As I, at, as soon as I, my elastic end gets to that edge, I'm just going to sew it in. I'm going to stop and sew it in. The reason why I stop and sew it in is because I don't want to lose that elastic. And it's such a short piece of elastic that it's easy to pull this, this elastic all the way through here. And that is never a happy moment for any of us because that means we have to rethread our elastic. And I'm pretty sure I speak for everybody out there that as soon as you've threaded your elastic once, you don't want to throw your other e thread it again. And as you can see, my elastic just popped right in, right there. Now I'm going to back and forth stitch that. And then I'm going to finish threading my elastic through here. And then I'm going to attach my elastic again, just like I did before, right at that edge. So now my elastic is completely attached and I don't have to worry about having to redo that. And I'm going to trim my elastic. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the center top of my bonnet back. 
And I am going to do that so you can see it with a black permanent marker. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to sew together our, our two hat brim pieces. So now I'm going to put clips just around here. And I want you to observe that I am not going to sew these together. I am not going to sew these together from edge to edge. I am actually going to start about an inch up from the end. So I'm making a mark to tell me where I'm going to do. The other thing I'm going to do at this point is I want to just cut off the tips. Match cut. I'm just going to cut off the tips and that that will make it so that I don't have a lot of extra fabric later on to deal with. So now I have flattened the tip on both sides. And you notice I did that after I, I um, ironed that, so I didn't have to think about how much to iron it. Now I'm going to sew this, and I sew it, I'm just sewing it at quarter inch. You can sew in deeper if you'd like. Um, I find that if I sew in deeper, I have a stiffer brim, which sometimes some people like and some people don't. The quarter inch brim is a little bit, is a little bit, um, so you see I have a little flap there and a little flap there. The quarter inch brim is a little bit, a little bit loose, a little bit less stiff. Then I am going to clip two of my stitches all the way along this curve because I want this curve to look really good. And I cut about every maybe inch and a half, two inches. It's not super critical how, um, how much you clip. I find that if I am, I find that if I am, um, have a, a sharper curve, I need to clip a little bit closer and the, other curve, the less sharp curve, I clip a little bit farther apart. Now I've clipped my curve. I'm going to turn this right side out and go over to the ironing board and iron it. The because I want this brim to be nice and and just a pretty shape. It's all iron. I will eventually top stitch this right along this edge, but I'm not going to do this till it's connected to the bonnet. The next thing I'm going to do, just to prep stuff, is I'm going to make my my tie. And to make my tie, I will fold this hot dog fashion, and I am going to sew the short way. Set my put my needle, turn my fabric on my needle, and then I am going to sew it all the way down. If you watch how my hands are dealing with the fabric, you will see that I just align kind of each bit of that fabric as I go um, because it just makes for a nice alignment. And I am still at my quarter and inch mark. Then I will do my second one. Then I am going to turn this right side out. To turn this right side out, I am going to use the end of a paintbrush right here. Um, I sometimes use a pencil, but I don't seem to have one easily accessible. Sometimes I use a pen. I just need something that's thin. And so I, so I come, I'm going to pull this, my two pieces apart right at where I've sewn it, and then put my, and kind of tuck that one part in. Oh, First, I'm going to cut my corner so I have a pretty corner. I don't have to cut that corner because there's no reason to. I don't have extra fabric on that side. So I have now put my paintbrush in to the little part, the little, the part I folded under. Then I'm going to pull it out. Then I need to find my paintbrush, which is in here. I'm going to dump that out because I don't ever want to sew on a paintbrush. That would be silly. There's my paintbrush. But I am going to take, I have to be honest, I'm going to use my tweezers 
because my tweezers have this really sharp tip, but you could use a pin. I just tend to use my tweezers because I like to. And I am going to make that corner come out nice and sharp. Then I'm going to take this over with, along with the second one right here to iron. The main body of my hat is this whole area right here. It needs to fit this one little short area here. And to do that, I made a mark right at the center line, and I set my sewing machine on a basting stitch, which for my sewing machine is five. Some people as big as seven, some people as little as four, but so you essentially set your sewing machine on your biggest stitch. And I am going to start at the top, at the top center of this, of my, uh, of my, brim of my the bottom body of my bonnet and i'm going to back stitch there because i'm even though this is great i'm going to be gathering this i do want to anchor one of my one of my gathers then i'm coming down all the way down to where i cut and then i am pulling this out cutting it off and then i'm going to do the other side. And to the other side from the top center, I need to look at the other side of the fabric. There I have a, a gather stitch. And the reason why I gather my gather stitch from the center of my top in two sections is because I want this to be even. I've marked the center of my brim, and the center of my brim and the center of my cat, my the body main body of this need to line up. So I have that much, and all of this fabric needs to fit it. And I want you to notice that I am working with just this the the line the pel the part of my cap that has pell on. I am not working with the both edges right there. I am just working with the edge that has pell on. Now I'm going to, now I'm going to pull this up in a gather. And you notice I didn't double gather the, this. If I am doing a waistband, I always run the, the double gather stitch. But in this particular case, I backstitched at the top. So I'm just gathering to that backstitch. And I need this gather to fit this portion, this portion of my brim. I want to clip, put a clip right here at the end of my gather thread. So my gather, I'm not gathering more, but I don't want to tie it off because I don't know. I didn't measure exactly precisely that this was enough or not enough. This is the side that's been ironed out to the pillow this is the right side and I want to put right sides together. So I line up, I line up my centers and I'm going to put a clip there. And then I line up my ends and these two ends should line up just like this. And you remember when I said we're not gonna sew all the way to the edge? That's that little bit. We just need that little bit to make this easier to sew. We don't actually need, we, we're, we're actually going to sew some of that portion. Then I attach that to my end. And then I look at my gathers and I want these gathers to look kind of pretty. And as you can see right here, I need to gather this a little more. So I'm taking my clip that's holding those gathers and I'm just gonna pull a little bit more to to make it so it's just a teensy bit more gathered and now my gathers fit nicely and you'll be able to tell if your gathers fit nicely because they'll just lay along that curve that you have and i've made my gathers pretty then i am going to take clips these clips 
and I am going to attach these together before I sew them. So I don't always, as you've noticed, I don't always use pins or clips. Sometimes I just freehand sew. But gathers tend to cause some issues if you don't corral them. We don't want any of those issues. We just are going to corral our gathers and then we are going to change our sewing machine back to a non-gather stitch. And in my particular case, my non, I like my non-gather stitch to be 3.0. A lot of machines default to 2.4 or 2.5 and I think that's a little bit of a, a small stitch for most things. And as you can see, I now have this edge prepared. And I am holding this out of the way. If you're nervous that you're going to catch this, just pin it out of the way. Um, because you really, really, truly do not want to catch that back fabric. So now I'm going to do the exact same thing I did on this side. I'm going to do the same thing I did on this side, on the other side, on, uh, on my second side. I am going to pull my gather up and, uh, and make it so it comes to that center, that center line, which I backstitched. But... And I've gathered that as much as I think I need to. And then I'm going to take the other half of my, the other half of my brim, and I am going to make sure it's the right size. Which it is not. See, I need to gather... I need to, if you look, I, you will see that it is still too long. I need to maybe take another half an inch out or an inch out, which I will do by taking off that clip and pulling up my thread by another half or so of an inch. Then I am going to attach this end to that, the cut spot and then arrange my gathers so that they arrange neatly on my brim. Now, I sometimes, I have to be honest, sometimes I will sew this half and half. I will say, wow, this half turned out so good. I'm just going to sew that half before I sew the other half. It really doesn't. I mean, that's certainly a valid way to do it. I have done it in the past. Um, it is just as easy as doing it this way because you're going to eventually sew both sides regardless of when you sew them. Let's see if I have one more clip. Oh, there it is. Now you can see that that lays nicely all along there. Now, how you lay your gather stitch down on your the bed of your machine is really truly in my opinion a matter of taste you I tend to sew with my gathers up so I can arrange them um, but in some ways it's easier to sew with your gathers down I'm starting from that little edge I cut in my bonnet from the putting in the elastic. And I want to sew right up to that cut edge. The reason why I'm sewing up to that cut edge is because I really want this to be um, finished looking. Um, and finished indeed, not just finished looking, but actually finished. And to finish that, um, it's easier to finish that if I if I ha don't have any excess. And as you can see, as I come up, I am arranging my gathers. And I know you can't see my needle, but I'm just making my gathers perpendicular to my needle. It's, and I'm keeping my whole thing. I am checking very carefully to make sure that those gathers are laying 
nicely that I'm not going to catch stuff weird because gathers can be unruly. Um, so I just, I just kind of, t because when I sew, I'm the boss of what I'm sewing. And if I want it to look like I want it to look, I, then I need to make it look that way. And as, and it will, your gathers, as you put them under your needle, will look however you put them under your needle. They are not going to magically get neater or messier. So however your needle sews them is what, how they are going to look. And so I tend to, to make my gathers um, line up like little soldiers um, or like pleats. I have, the, I tend to like them to line up like they look like miniature pleats because that way I'm going to get a good looking, a good looking gather. Um, honestly, you don't have to. That's just something that I do because I actually like kind of the pleat look better, but there's no way you could pleat the end of a bonnet. You actually just have to gather them. This one I think I need to gather just a teensy bit more as it's coming into the end because I think my pressure foot push pulled my gather out just a little bit. Now I'm coming up and I am going to very carefully hit that, that edge where I cut. So now I have sewn the top of the brim on all the way around. And as you can see, my gathers are all lined up and marching nicely. Now that we've gathered the top of our bonnet, our, the full body of our bonnet onto our brim, we are going to top stitch our, our brim. And we're going to top stitch from the edge and we're going to top stitch from the edge all the way around to the other edge. And I am just going to start right where that bonnet hits the edge of my, of my gathers. I'm gonna to top stitch all the way around and I happen to be top stitching it more roughly a quarter of an inch. Um, I would normally top stitch this in a color that's prettier, but it is what it is because you can't see a. If I were top, it, if I were top stitching this um, for somebody, if I were making this for somebody, I would top stitch that in a matching color. I wouldn't top stitch that in black. And then I have it neatly top stitched. Now, this part of the bonnet is just fiddly. It's not hard, it's just fiddly. So what we're gonna do is, I'm going to cut some of this fabric out right here, because I just don't need extra fabric right near my ears. There is a little fabric cut out of there. And then I am going to take, and I, that part that I, ironed. That part that I ironed is going to go over the, over all of that gather stuff. We are going to, but we are going to put that all over that gather stuff, making sure it goes past the stitching line. And then we are going to turn over on the other side of our bonnet and we are going to pin it right along the origin, the seam between the bonnet and the body of this, between the brim and the body of this bonnet. bonnet. Um, this is what we will be stitching in the ditch right here. Stitching in the ditch means we're just going to stitch very close to this original seam. So I, let me, let me turn this inside out so you can see it better. I'll put that out of the way. So I lay this out and I cover those stitches, then I am holding it, I turn it back on this side and pin it. 
And what I am doing is called pin basting. I am actually putting two stitches on each pin just because that way I don't have, I have fewer pins. Um, and as I look at the outside of this bonnet, I need to make sure that I'm keeping my my edge kind of taut. And so I'm 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 sweeping this in and because of how far we sewed it in, this actually is a, is a little tedious but super easy. You're not going to miss the you're not going to miss oh, that's a trash pin. Sorry. Um, you're not going to miss the inside of that bonnet, the inside of that brim. You're going to catch it every and at every spot, just because of how we ironed it and how we sewed it. It's this is a fiddly but not a hard, fiddly but not hard. Now, if I were doing a serger, on the other hand, if I had a serger and I were serging this, I would not be enclosing this seam at all. This encloses this seam. But if I were surging this, I would have taken both of the brim pieces and sewn them on together with, and then surged it off to finish the seam. Because you have to finish the seam some way or other. It can't, you can't leave it as a raw seam. It just doesn't, it just doesn't, it just, it just, because of the fact that this gets sweaty and this seam just needs to be finished. Now we're going to go all the way to here, and then I am going to make sure I didn't pin anything on into my edge. And I'm going to cut all this, all these gather threads off because I don't need them anymore, and they're just kind of getting in my way. Uh, goodbye thread. Now let's see if I've got them. Oh, I already cut them off there because obviously they were bugging me a little bit. Now I want you to see that all the way across you can see I have pins and miracle of miracles I pinned this the right direction for my sewing that is not my that is not my my shall we say my one of my sewing strengths and now I am sewing very carefully along that edge that I just pinned and I'm sewing now there is a foot for this. Um, I don't happen to have the foot for my commercial machine, but there is a foot that allows you to sew in the ditch super easily. But I am gonna be honest, I've, I have never actually used that foot. I just stitch in the ditch, I just pay attention. But I don't say, say don't use that foot. If you learn to use that foot, it will make and you do a lot of stitching this way, it'll make your life a lot easier. And I am super carefully paying attention to my, to my bonnet, my brim, so I know I'm not going to sew it together. Um, I've done that before, and I am going to tell you right now that is not my happiest moment ever. And so I try to be careful when I sew this together. I stitch this last seam on the top to not sew my brim underneath itself. Um, I'm just kind of keeping stuff out of the way. Now I have sewn all the way along that. And I want you to see that the inside of my bonnet is now finished. You can't see the seam that I put in there with all those gathers. The outside has a line right here. You can see my stitching line if you look. There's a black stitching line right along that edge. Can you see it? I don't know if you can see it. Um, and the last thing, we now have two last things to do. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to double roll my, my gather. And the reason why I saved that for last is I want you to look right here. You can see this is part of my brim and that it hasn't been sewn down properly. So I am going to clip that and I am going to, 
And if this, the little gather part can be a little bit tricky, just pull those gathers back so you have a little flat spot. And you're going to double turn this one, two, and then I'm going to clip that as well. And I am going to start getting everything out of the way. And I am going to start right here where I've stopped top stitching, where I've top stitched, and I am going to sew all the way along. Come on, you, I know you can do this. If you're having trouble with your clips at this particular juncture where the elastic is, just put a pin in it. And I'm going to sew where I've stopped top stitching my bonnet and I'm going to sew all the way down to the bottom of my of my case of my turn at the bottom. This stabilizes that one little part that's not finished. And as you can see, there it went zoop and there it went zoop. I'm going to do that again on this side so we can see it one more time. And then I am pushing the gathers towards the center so I have a little bit more workspace. So all those gathers are pushed towards the center on that elastic. And then I am going to double roll that clip that I, that, that snip that I did. First I'm going to take some of these threads out. I'm going to clip it there. I'm going to clip it at the elastic. And then I'm going to clip it right here at the top where I'm going to start sewing. So now I have a clip there, there, and there. And the last thing that this bonnet needs is its ties. Now, I still, in my opinion, have a little bit of a weak spot in my bonnet, and that is this junction, juncture between the rim and the elastic. And to fix that, I am going to take my, trimming all the threads just like that, I am going to take my end, and I am going to sew it, my tie end. This is my tie end. And I want you to see that this is the raw end and this is the finished end. Now I am going to take that raw end and I am going to make my bonnet so it's nice and straight. So, it, so I am sewing between these two reinforced portions and I am going to just sew that end in right there and I am sewing it I am sewing it so that the raw end is out towards the out and then I am going to flip my my end and as you can see you can't see that raw end but the tie you can see on this side and then I am going to turn this over because I can see my tie and I'm going to top stitch it right at the edge right there. That finishes that. That is that finishes that last little teensy part that I feel like needs a little bit more reinforcement. Here's my other tie. We are going to do that exact same thing one more time on this side. Reminding you, I am putting the raw edge so it is out towards the the outside of the bonnet. Then I sew it and I am pulling my two parts straight, making sure nothing is caught into this one little part that I'm sewing. I am pulling my two parts straight so I get a nice and in this particular case you can see I can see my raw edge. When I look at it on this side, I am going to snip that off. I'm just going to snip it so I can't see it because I don't want to look at it. Don't snip it so low that it 
you're snipping right at the stitches, but you can snip it off so you can't see it on the outside. Then I am once again taking my bonnet and I am sewing the edge where I uh, where I feel like it needs to be reinforced. And there is our bonnet. It's very cute. Thank you for watching Share Our World.